Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the light in. And I found the best place to do this is right at the top. And it fits kind of nicely in there. Uh, however, you just need to bend the wires and uh, get it in place and bend them around and off and they kind of come together at the end here bend them down and like I said solid wire it once you bend it it stays in place very nice very helpful for this type of connection okay once you have that in place make sure you feed your two wires out so that they are uh, ready to work with put the dome back on and you could maybe hot glue gun this uh, LED assembly in there, but it's there's so little space in here that it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the cap on, and the peg should snap right back on into the holes and just slide the assembly back in, and you're, that's good to go. All right. Next, you want to cut two more wires, just like here. And uh, here's the Molex connector. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick our solid core wires to act as pins into the proper spaces of our Molex connector. Now here we have six pins, so which, which ones do we use? Well, thankfully, Brian Tag Ferret Farley had given this, this um, schematic here of which pin does what. And you can see the location of where this um, indicator is here. And basically our 9 volts is right here at the corner. And our ground is right above it as green. Next to the 9 volts is a port for the laser signal. This means that whenever you pull the trigger, it will send a signal. We don't want that one. What we want is when we get hit. That's this one. This is white. So we're going to use these three that are in the corner. So what we're going to do is we're going to take... This is from the, our LED assembly. We're going to take one of the pins, not the one that's negative, not the one that's ground, but we're going to take the other one, the positive one, and put it right into the positive part of the, or the power part of the Molex connector. This is 9 volts going straight in. Next, what we want to do is to take this other cable here. This is our ground, and we're going to put this into the ground part of the Molex connector, which is right above it. Next thing what we want to do is we're going to make a temporary connection. And this is for our trigger. This is for our um, white wire that's going to go here. But in order to do this first, I'm going to just take this wire and I'm just going to wrap it around. And then just to make sure I got a good connection, I'm just going to take needle and those pliers and just press it together just to make sure that we have a nice connection here. Okay, And use the other end of the wire that will go into the uh, hit indicator of your Molex connector, just like so. Okay, so now that we have all of that in place, we have one last thing we want to connect, and this is the uh, negative end of the uh, LED assembly going into the input of the transistor. And so this is the output of our LED going into the input of our transistor. And we just do the same thing. We wrap the uh, wire around the solid core. And again, we crush it with using the uh, needle nose pliers. And we've got a nice good connection. This is what we have. So this is a test. We want to make sure this works first before we solder any more wires. You could just put in the battery tray like so. Hold the battery tray in place and put on the end cap here. Screw that on. If for some reason when you pull the trigger it doesn't work, you'll need to press this red button for a couple of seconds and it will uh, get it to uh, be able to work for you. In order to test it, what we're going to do is we're going to take a modern L LTX, put it on solo mode, and here's what the test looks like. All right, we have a success. It seems to work great. So next you want to turn off your uh, tagger here. Just uh, power it down by pressing the two buttons on the end and unscrew the back catch. Take out the battery tray and again uh, pull the trigger and press this button here just to make sure you, you 
um, release any voltage in any capacitors in the tagger. Okay, now that this works, next step is to solder these wires together. We got two wires we need to solder. Here's both of them soldered together. Next step, we're going to use some electrician's tape to just protect our wires so we don't want them actually touching anything else because that may shorten, ruin the tagger and have some something blow up. So we want to protect any bare wires uh, that are sticking out. So here's one that we're going to protect. Wrap it around. Looks good. And we're going to do it again with this other one here. Wrap that together nice and tight. We also want to put some tape at the bottom of this board here. And there's that. So that's all protected and covered, ready to go. And so next what we do, we want to start stuffing wires in here. And this connector here will just go slides down in a nice space right here. Stuff in some of the wires that you uh, took out down in here. And we also may want to just uh, put some electrician's tape on this connector just to make sure nothing slips out or falls out. And that's what that looks like. Okay, so we step our wires back in as best we can. And next we're ready to reassemble this. So just put your triggers back in. And now we're ready to put the, clamp, the uh, top shell on. One thing you want to do before you put any screws in is once you have this, the top shell on is to get a flashlight and kind of look all around in here. See if there's any cables or wires that are kind of pinched in between the top half and the bottom half. And here this looks okay. Okay, here's our screws that we're going to use to put the halves together. And remember again, two of the screws are different. These two screws here go into the bottom uh, cap on the hilt, and the other screws go to attach the, uh, the shell to the body. And we're going to put those in right now. And now we're going to put the bottom cap onto the tagger and screw those in. And there we have it. It's fully assembled, hit light, ready to go. And let's uh, take a look at that in action. Very, very, very cool. This has been a fun mod to do. Again, um, what you're going to do is you're going to sacrifice the Molex connector at the bottom. You're not going to be able to plug in a rumble port to your tagger anymore. However, um, I, I think that this is probably a better thing because it, when you think about it, the rumble pack, number one, they're hard to get almost impossible to get. And even if you can find them, you're probably going to spend about 40 or 50 bucks to get one. And when the rumble pack goes off, the person holding the tagger is the only one who can have any sensory feedback that the rumble pack is going off when you get hit. However, however, when you make this mod and the, and the light comes on, this gives some sensory feedback to everyone who's playing the game and to you as well. So, I would like to argue that doing this mod, um, when you have the hit light, it helps everybody out. Everybody can see that you got hit. The person who uh, landed the shot on you gets the satisfaction of knowing, hey, I hit the guy. Um, your teammates can know, oh, that guy's taking hits. I need to protect him. Um, you know, obviously, you're getting hit. Uh, so it's a very nice mod, and I think it's uh, it adds a lot to the game. So I think it's definitely worth doing. I think it's worth sacrificing the uh, bottom uh, Molex connector for your Rumble Pack, and that's a very nice uh, and an easy mod to do. Don't let the fact that there's soldering involved, don't let that scare you. It's something that if I can do it, you can do it. It's just a matter of getting your hands dirty and trying it. And um, once you try it and learn, know how simple it is, you're going to be soldering everything. So, um, so anyways, that's the mod. I hope you enjoy it. Hope it works well for you. And uh, stay safe and have fun playing laser tag.